Welcome back. We're going to continue with our discussion of various kinds of depositional environments in basic petroleum geology. One of the environments that we are considering now, or will consider now, is that of the submarine fan. This is probably the future of the oil business as we get progressively into deeper and deeper water as we go farther and farther offshore. In our discussion of submarine fans, we'll be talking about channel levy complexes, what their shapes are, the sediments that we find in them. We'll take a look at distribution of sediments across a submarine fan, and then we'll take a look at the transport mechanism for the sediments from the land down onto the uh, submarine fan. The primary one is turbidity currents. The resulting deposit is a turbidite, and the form of the deposit, resulting deposit, is the Bauma sequence. And we'll be talking about all of those. So as we continue, basically what you're looking at is that you have a delta bringing sediments down to the margin of the basin. Those sediments, some of those sediments, work their way into a submarine canyon and wind up down in deep water. So here's the submarine fan here at the base of the continental slope. We have a number of different lobes on the fan, so it's kind of like a delta, but in deep water. The upper fan over here consists of a single channel, but we divide that up into a number of individual channels as we get farther out on the fan. The fan itself can be in hundreds to thousands of feet of water. It all depends on where the deposition occurs. If we take a look at the coast of California, of central California, we have several submarine fans off that coast. We have the Delgada fan over here, which is fed by a channel which comes up here very close to the beach. And then if we have the Monterey fan over here, pretty much opposite Santa Cruz and Monterey in central California, that is also fed by a couple of channels that are up, that come very close to the beach. Then we have a much smaller fan down here, the Arguello fan, down by Point Conception in California. So it's kind of like an alluvial fan, but at the base of the continental slope. If we take a look at the kinds of sediments that we have, here's the feeder channel supplying sediments out onto the fan itself out in here. And so we can see where this single channel divides up into a number of different sections or different lobes over in here. And so that marks the beginning of the middle fan. The upper fan up in here, which is closest to the channel, the feeder channel, the upper fan in here is going to be just a single channel, but its division into a number of individual smaller channels, that marks the beginning of the mid fan channel. The mid fan then continues on farther to the south until uh, we essentially run out of the channels and, and the channels basically disappear, but you have the finest grain material being distributed out here on the lower fan. Mostly the things that we're interested in from a petroleum standpoint is uh, the channel fills themselves. However, sometimes the natural levees on either side of the channels are going to be of interest to us. Here's an example from a channel out onto the fan surface off to the right. So our coarse grain material is going to be confined mostly to the channel. These channels can be on the order, depending on which fans you're talking about, can be on the order of two, three, or 400 feet deep, if not more, if you're in the really biggest fans. Then you have the natural levees on either side over here. That's going to be a mixture of fine grain material and coarser, relative term, coarser material. So you can have both this mixture of sand and mud over in here, and you do have reservoir capabilities from the natural levee. Then you get out here onto the fan surface itself off to the right hand side. These are going to be your interchannel sandstones and mudstones, and so some of those sandstones are going to be capable of producing petroleum as well. If we take a look at a uh, shallow reading seismic shot of a portion of the Amazon Delta or the Amazon submarine fan, you'll notice that the channel system here sits on top of the fan, this darker zone right in through here, that is going to be the actual fan surface itself. And so we see that this thing is piled up on top of the fan. And so within the channel right in here and another channel right over in here, 
we can have potential there for petroleum. This is a line drawing interpretation of what we see in this seismic line right up in here. And so you can see that there's a number of channels here. They have the pink system down here, the green system here, the gray system, because they didn't know what else to call them, so they just called them colors. But anyhow, all of these have the potential to produce petroleum on a number of fans around the world. The channels flowing across the surface of the fans have a nice meandering pattern to them. This is on the left hand side we see the Indus fan. This is a side scan sonar of the surface of the Indus fan and you'll notice that we have perfectly good meandering channels going across the surface of the Indus fan. The right hand side is a uh, photograph of the Amazon River in Brazil and the object is to show you here that we have a meandering system in, Brazil, in the uh, Amazon uh, jungle and that meandering system looks very much like what we see over here in the Indus fan. This is the transport mechanism for sediments down the channels. It's basically a, tur a turbulent mass of water and sediment, water and mud plus sand, churning mass which is going down slope. These things can be very, very powerful uh, flows. But anyhow, that's how we distribute the material from the shallow water out onto the deep water of the fan. And this is called the turbidity current. The resulting deposit will be a turbidite. And so here you have a turbidite in this picture right here. And you'll notice that it is very coarse grained towards the bottom, becomes increasingly fine grained as we go towards the top. It's divided up into five different sections. We talk about each one of the five different sections, the A unit, the B, C, D, and E unit. We, these are the descriptions of the units over in here as far as their grain size is concerned. Generally, we hope to look see a lot of this A unit here and the B unit here. These are, can be quite productive of petroleum. Here's an actual picture from southeast, southeastern France of a turbidite. And so you have the A unit down here, which is massive and large grain size. Sitting on top of that, you have some subtle uh, lamination in there. That's going to be the unit, slightly finer grain size. Up in here, you see the wavy bedding of the C unit, and then you have the finest muddy material sitting on top of that. Here's a rock hammer for scale here. So this whole thing is not much more than six or seven feet thick. But if you have a whole stack of these piled on top of each other, then it certainly becomes a worthwhile uh, effort to try and produce from all of those. Nothing says that we have to have a complete section of a Bauma sequence. Here we start with a B. We don't even have the A unit. So we start out with the B unit, then you have the wavy bedding of the C unit, and then you have the finer grain systems of the D and the E unit sitting on top. The whole thing is going to be what? Less than a foot. And so that obviously was not of a high volume uh, turbidity current that brought those sediments. Here's an example from northern Italy where you have the C unit down here. Notice the wavy bedding of the C unit. Then you have an A unit, which was deposited on top of that, which you had probably the D and the E sitting on top of the C unit, but then it was stripped off by the more powerful uh, turbidity current that came along bringing the A unit, so it removed the, D, the E unit and the D unit, part of the C unit, and deposited the A on top. So you have a very high energy system here. Here's a picture of just the C unit. If we take a look at here, we have probably some Bs and some Cs in here, and then the D and an E. Here's another C unit right in here, which gives way to the D and E unit here. So by no stretch of the imagination do you have necessarily have to have a complete Bauma sequence. We can take a look at some of the deposits in a feeder canyon. If we go to uh, south of Los Angeles, go to Dana Point, and you look at the road that gives you access to Dana Point, you will find off to the northern side that you have some very, very large gravels and very coarse grain sands filling up a submarine canyon. And so these are obviously, they have very good reservoir potential. Not here, 
but if you put something like that in the subsurface, then you can get the petroleum that will fill it up. And so we have a yellow book down here for scale, just to give you an idea of the size of this. Here we have an example of the filling up of a submarine canyon with coming from the shallow water. We have very coarse grained sediments in here. We have, uh, this is going to be a conglomerate. We're talking about materials that might be the size of a baseball or a softball. Very large particles. Uh, below it down here and above it up here, we have uh, sandy size material, but nonetheless the sand grains are very large size. And then the whole thing to give you an idea of the scale is we have a yellow book down here, which is inside the white circle. So that's going to be our discussion. This plus other things are going to be our discussions of submarine fans. Thank you for your attention. And let's move on to something else.